Let's go. I got a vision I see in my head, a melody buried deep into my soul. They call us crazy, we cutting the edge, unlocking the future and letting it go. This is a calling that's higher the time we decided our stories are gonna be told. This is where legends are born, we paving the road, a future that favors the bold. Break the rules, break the laws, this is the moment we change it all. Break the rules, break the laws, this is the moment we change it all. Yeah, greatness. Yeah, it feels like greatness. Woo! Greatness. Yeah, it feels like greatness. Legendary in the making. Reach out and we take it. Not to emerge, we on the verge, and it feels like yeah. greatness. Something coming, I can feel it. Deep down in my spirit. Revolution, it's a new day. Time to redefine the limits. We came here to shatter the mold yeah. I know you hear it, I know you yeah. see it We are the fearless, we are the genius yeah. We are defiance, yeah. we are the beacons yeah. We are the true yeah. believers Yeah, greatness Yeah, it feels like greatness Woo. Greatness Yeah, it feels like greatness Legendary in the making yeah. Reach out and we take it Not to emerge, we on the verge And it feels like greatness
you smell what the rock is cooking. Did you call it a pay per view? It's a premium live event. Oh, of course. Uh, but we still, it's still pay per view to us, darn it. And this came from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, to be more precise. Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, inside the Jeddah Silver Dome. Sorry, I mean Super Dome. <laughs> We had eight matches in total, well, technically seven, but we'll get to that. Yes, we will. One of which was moved to the pre-show, as is always the case with these things. Yes, as Rey Mysterio took on the Miz. Yes, now, this was a relatively... I want to say simple, but this is the type of match you'd expect from two veterans at this point. Yeah. Except I think the Miz decided he wanted to uh, take a little bit... Well, he attempted to do a bit of lying, cheating and stealing. However, I think he missed that class from Eddie Guerrero. Yes, he basically tried to get... Succeeded in getting Dominic thrown out of the match. Yeah, he, he got the chair. Dominic managed to get the chair away from him the first time round. Then another chair came into the play. Dominic managed to uh, get it away from him. However, the Miz. Went into the steel steps, which uh, caused the referee to shift his attention. So he sees Dominic with a uh, chair. Yeah, and Dominic was able to get 
and froze for me, uh, Dominic out of the uh, arena. However, as uh, the news was going for its car crash and finale on Rey Mysterio, he gets caught into a roll up for the one, two, three, giving Rey Mysterio a the win in the match. Miz yes. being the bitter loser that he is, decides to uh, jump Ray, that is, until Dominic uh, comes in for the save, which ultimately led to uh, the uh, 12 to 18 of Weisner. Everybody's known as a double six one nine, and the pair of frog splashes onto the Miz. Later on in the night, the Miz is backstage whining and moaning how it was a two on one situation, and you know he's gonna find himself a tag team partner. Then he goes off saying he needs to make a phone call. That Monday on Raw, we find out that it's going to be a tag team match of WrestleMania. Yes. With the Mysterios of Dominic and Ray teaming up, take on The Miz and Logan Paul. Yes, the social media superstar has returned back to WWE, much to everyone's annoyance. Can I just point out to uh, The Miz two things? What? One, did you forget what happened to you last year when you were in a tag team match with a celebrity? And two, did you not see what happened to Logan Paul at WrestleMania last year? The main card opened up the same way that the Royal Rumble did with the with the Universal Championship match. As the head of the table, Roman Reigns put his title on the line against Goldberg. Is it is it Goldberg or Oldberg or Botsberg at this point of time? Uh, some people were, went into this with a bit of uh, bully, I think is the right word. Yes. Because Oberg is a two time Universal Champion. Both of those title wins come in in the February pay per view, and one of them just so happened to come at a show in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Rest in peace, fiend. Yes. However, considering what the uh, land match of WrestleMania was, there was most fans knew which way this was going to go. Pretty much. This. And really, at the, at the beginning, it was almost like a battle of a spear. Hitting the spear, Goldberg hitting the spear, so on and so forth. Yeah. Then they went to the outside for a bit of uh, hard hitting action there. Back in the wind, Roman Reigns would hit Goldberg with a two man punch and, and would attempt. A spear only to be uh, hit with a spear from Goldberg. And as Goldberg went for the jackhammer, which he might have actually been able to pull off this time, yeah. Roman Reigns counted into the uh, guillotine submission hold. Which 
by a little bit of a uh, fight from Goldberg, ultimately took him down, allowing Roman Reigns to win by technical submission. Yes, technical submission. And still the Universal Champion. And Roman Reigns now joins the likes of Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker, and Braun Strowman with clean wins over Goldberg. Yes, so now we move on to our first Elimination Chamber match to crown a number one contender to the Raw Women's Championship. Yes, this was the Women's Elimination Chamber match. And remember, under the rules of Saudi Arabia, the women have altered ring gear when they do these shows. Yes, so no skin is allowed to be shown while they're doing these matches. As my colleague has already said, the tyres were made and to be adjusted. And to their credit, all the women in this match did a great job. Yeah, well, most of them was just a slight variation. Like, Nikki A. A. J. pretty much came out to what she normally comes out in. Except, I think, the uh, sleeves on the arms were... And, uh, starting this match, we, speaking of Nikki Ajax, she started this uh, chamber match alongside Liv Morgan. Yes, she did. The third entrant into the match was Dudra. The entrant into this match was Rhea Ripley. Little Miss Bliss, or, or Little Miss Crazy, whatever you want to call her. Who had a swing set in her pod. Was the fifth entrance. And then the sixth and final entrance, who earned the right by winning the gauntlet match on Raw, was Bianca Bauer. No, let's talk it through the order of the... Sorry about that interruption, yeah. Shall we carry on? Technical issue, please stand by. Where were we? Yeah, so let's look at really more of elimination. Yes. First to go was Nikki AHS after being hit with a uh, riptide from the referee, which given their little uh, feud since Nikki's heel turn was unsurprising. Next to be eliminated was Liv Morgan at the hands of Little Miss Bliss. Ron, second, no, okay. second to be eliminated was to drop following a, uh, oh, yes. on a uh, power bomb from Liv Morgan from, I believe it was like the middle rope. Yes, correct. Then Liv Morgan was eliminated by uh, Little Miss Bliss. Which left 
Rhea Ripley, Alexa Bliss, and Bianca Belair. Unfortunately for Rhea Ripley, she was eliminated. Yes. Courtesy of a uh, friend slash enemy at times, Bianca Belair and the KOD. Leaving Bianca Belair and Alexa Bliss as the final two. Uh, Alexa Bliss, I, want, I don't want to say could have won this match, but storyline purposes. This went to the right person. Yeah, so Bianca Bella is your winner and will go on to face whoever wins out of the Raw Women's Championship match later tonight at WrestleMania. Any chance, any second guesses as to who that may be? Maybe. So, following the Women's Elimination Chamber match, they stayed with the women. As we went to the tag team match with Charlotte Flair and Drunk with Power Sonia Deville, who is likely going to get fired from that position in the next couple of weeks. Yes, took on the team of Feel the Glow Naomi and Charlotte Flair's number one contender, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Now, Something we did notice last or note last week with a police show because SmackDown hadn't aired yet. So should have realised that this was going to happen. Yeah. On the February eleventh episode of SmackDown, in a backstage segment, Ronda Rousey said she could beat Sonya Deville with one hand tied behind her back. Well, it turns out, Sonny Deville actually put that stipulation into law. Yes, when it came to the contract signing on the 18th, which was a pre-recorded episode of SmackDown, just so we could uh, get to Saudi Arabia on time, that was uh, put into the uh, contract, which Wanda Rousey agreed to. Partly because Sonia Deville was still selling her down. So the bell. Well, so please also the briefly bell. going back to the whole uh, gear thing with the women. Ronda Rousey took note of that and came down to the ring in the same outfit she wore in the 2008. Beijing Olympics when she won a uh, bronze medal. Very clever, Ronda. Oh, very, very clever there. So we get to a win. The bell goes. And surprise, surprise. Tanya Deville decides you know, that uh, she does not need her arm in a sling anymore. Nope. Essentially making it a trap. <laughs> yes. So, for the bat, didn't do much good as Wanda showed she could go with one arm tied behind her back. What they did cleverly in this match was not expose Charlotte and Wanda to each other too much. No. Because we want to save those two from being colliding with each other in, until WrestleMania, which at this point is 32 days away. No, yeah. not 32, 37. Yeah. And then Naomi was in the ring with uh, Charlotte quite a bit. Or Sonia wanted nothing to do with her. And then towards the end of the match, 
when uh, Ronda managed to get the advantage. Charlotte practically said, I want nothing to do with this. And I said she left Sonny Deville for dead. Yes. As uh, Ronda Rousey locked in the armbar with one arm, forcing Deville to tap out. Being the win for her team. Uh, staying, uh, staying on the SmackDown side, let's go into the men. In a rematch from day one, Goddess Warrior Drew McIntyre would go one on one with Mad Cat Moss. Except this time, it was a false count anyway, Max. And how do I say this politely? Yes, how? Is anyone happy? Happy Corbin was a pain in the arse in this month. Yes, and so, I guess what else was a pain in the arse? Really? Um, Madcap Moss's uh, neck. E yes, there was a nasty box in this match. Yes. Not that. Not a hundred percent sure exactly whose fault it was. No. But I believe there were some apologies done to uh, Vince McMahon man backstage. Which I'm not surprised about. But following some uh, interference. From Happy Corbin. Drew McIntyre decided enough was enough and in the closing limits of the match decided to keep Corbin uh, at bay by uh, swinging Angela at him. Yes, McIntyre gets Angela, sees Corbin coming, and Corbin says, No, try out of the ring and shout to the referee. And the referee, the referee's like, what do you want me to do? It's completely legal under the rules. And that's what I'm not sure if I'd be heading though is slightly what they mean, but uh So then M Ma Mad Cat gets hit with a claymore. One, two, three, here's you in uh through McIntyre. Yeah, long story short, McIntyre wins. Now we go to the Raw Women's Championship match. Oh yes, between Big Time Bex and WWE Hall of Famer Lita. Quickly going back to the whole uh, gear thing as well. Simply because of how Lita's uh, gear has always been. She didn't really need to change it too much. No, not really. But this was a dream match. With one of the whole, uh, I would say, uh, factors being that there wouldn't be a Becky Lynch if I was an elite, but now that there is a Becky Lynch if there's need to be a leader. Yeah. Um, and I think it's safe to say that during this match, Lita did prove that she can still go. Yep. In it, it was just over 12 minutes long. The match went back and forth several times. Lynch did manage to get the arm ball in on uh, the disarmor even on Lita, uh, but Lita was going to make it to the ropes, so uh, Becky Lynch decides to turn that into a rock bottom. You're welcome. <laughs> But then Lisa puts her foot on the rope. 
Then Lita hits uh, Becky Lynch with a twist of fate. Not copyrighted by Mr. Hardy. No, not at all. Then goes up for the Lita Splash. Just as Ripley's hand is about to hit the three, Lynch kicks out. Barely. Barely, yes. But then, as Lita's picking up Becky, almost in a Randy Orton out of nowhere style, I stick. <laughs> Lynch hits Lita with another lock bottom. Again, you're welcome. Getting the one, two, three. And uh, as the commentators said in this match, Lynch didn't necessarily win, she just survived. Yeah. So, and Lynch quickly gets out of the ring and uh, heads up the ramp, allowing Lita to uh, have a moment with her fans in the ring. Now, whether this is signaling that this is a Actual farewell match for Lita, we don't know. It's, all, it's only speculation at this moment in time. However, oh, the, however, this did now officially set that Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. And following the events of SummerSlam and Extreme Rules, Bianca Bella has a bit of a uh, score to settle with Becky. Oh, she does. She absolutely does. Now, our next match was supposed to be the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. But unfortunately, due to the Usos, that match never started. Yes, because the Viking Raiders are making their way down to the ring when they get jumped by the Usos. Effectively laying them out. Which probably means that they are either going to do this match on an episode of SmackDown coming up, or they could uh, delay it to WrestleMania itself. But either way, they are not going to end this like that. No. And now, it's time for the Elimination Chamber main event of a WWE Championship. As? The Almighty Bobby Lashley. Or is it all cowardice? <laughs> but we'll get to that. <laughs> Defends the WWE Championship against AJ Styles, Austin Fairley. Riddle, Seth Rollins, or Seth freaking Rollins as he calls himself now, and the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. So, first two superstars in this match are Austin Fairley and Seth Rollins. Now, don't forget, these two have history being former tag team partners. Kind of. Mm -hmm. But then, this is where things got a little bit interesting, because as these two are going at it, Seth Rollins hits the buckle bomb, which, by the way, has injured people in the past. Well, it kind of struck again. It's a buckle bomb on uh, Austin Theory, except he goes through the pod, which is housing Bobby Lashley, and Lashley goes down. Then we, uh, as the match is carrying on, we have they open the chamber and we have Adam Pierce and some. Uh, Medical personnel 
come in to see if Lashley's okay. So then they take him out of the chamber where he can go undergo uncasting and protocol. Yes. Later on in the match, it is then demands that Lashley has failed concussion protocol and will not be returning, which means we are guaranteed to have a new WWE champion. Now, in, in reality, this is done because Bobby Lashley appears to be needing shoulder injury and has been dealing with some kind of shoulder issue since the Royal Rumble. Yes. So then the third entrant into the match was uh, Riddle. Then the fourth entrant into the match was AJ Styles. The fifth entrant into the match was supposed to be Bobby Lashley. However, however, as he's not there, Brock Lesnar decides he's not going to wait any longer and kicks him the, the, his pod. Literally kicks through it. In which case, things go from bad to worse. There's, there's a few suplexes. Then we get Seth Rollins, hit with an F5, 1, 2, 3. Riddle, hit with an F5, 1, 2, 3. AJ Styles, hit with an F5, 1, 2, 3. That then leaves Austin Theory and Brock Lesnar. And Austin Theory is like, oh shit. Yep, he's like, oh no, I'm going to uh, die now. <laughs> so he tries to run away from this now. And where are you going to go? I mean, there's a reason that uh, everything's locked. There is. Yeah. Then he kind of gets into, he locked himself into a pod. Except Lesnar breaks through that one as well. In what is possibly the worst mistake he's ever done, he then manages to get a low blow on Brock Lesnar and hits a DVT. Oi, very. I don't want to say me a fool, but for a fool. Then Austin Theory decides to try and be Spider Man. Yes, he tries to climb out of the chamber. Yeah, he gets and he, he gets half of his body out of the chamber, but now Black Lesnar is uh, close behind him and says, Where do you think you're going? Uh, I don't know where this is going. And pulls him back down. So now they're on top of one of the pods. And then we have the death of Austin Finley. Pretty much, because Brock Lesnar puts Austin Fury on his shoulders, on top of the pod, and we quote, F fives him off of the pod. Yeah, it's an F5 from on top of the pod. Finley is then back into the uh, Rin area. And it's pinned for the one, two, three, which means that the winner of the match and new WWE champion for the seventh time is Brock Lesnar, and also means that at WrestleMania it is now title for title winner takes all. As Brock Lesnar faces Roman Reigns. No. 
when you free the card, one more to the lender's fight on tapping policies. Yes, so... In the Pluto maps... My Mysterio defeated the Miz. Now, in the next match, Roman Reigns retains his Universal Championship against Goldberg by technical submission. In the Women's Elimination Chamber match for the Raw Women's Championship match at WrestleMania, Bianca Belair defeated Alexa Bliss to drop Liv Morgan, Nikki AHS, and Rhea Ripley. Team of Naomi and Ronda Rousey defeated the SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair and Sonny Deville by submission. Where Ronda Rousey had to rest with one arm tied behind her back. Drew McIntyre defeated Madcap Moss in a false count anywhere match. Lita retained her, well, Becky Lynch, should I say? I have been in my head for some reason. Becky Lynch retained her Raw Women's Championship against the WWE Hall of Famer Lita. The Usos and the Viking Raiders Smackdown Tag Team Championship match did in no contest after the match never got in the way. And Brock Lesnar defeated Bobby Lashley, Pedro Stell, Austin Theory, Riddle and Seth Rican Rollins to become WWE Champion for the seventh time. Now, along with everything else that was going on at this, this show, the day before, and then officially announced by WWE, it was also revealed that the day before WrestleMania, in a two-in-one special, going into the WWE Hall of Fame will be... The Undertaker, otherwise known as the greatest gimmick ever designed by Vince McMahon. Yeah, so uh, all of us on the Red Bulls and WWE Show would like to send our congratulations to The Undertaker. We'll wait the next couple of weeks to see who joins him. But until then, he's been... Sean Randy Smith and he's been Lisa Rock and we will see you next time on the final build to WrestleMania.